breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Glitter Boys. All right, we're bringing it back to the Rift So CCs. This time we're going to do a spotlight on yet another one of the iconic Rift <laughs> character classes, the Operator, everybody's favorite mechanic. I really like the Operator because it's one of the non supers, not amazingly high powered, but just integral to the world and integral to a well run party, too. We're going to be looking between uh, two books, the, the reprint of the, uh, of the original Rifts. Um, I have the 30-year open in front of me and the Ultimate Edition. There are some changes. We'll compare and contrast. We'll tell you about what we think about the Operator, how they fit, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Do you have any memorable? Have you ever played an Operator? I've played with one. I have never played one myself, but I've seen... No, wait, I have played an Operator. He was fun. Yes, he was. He was. Uh, <laughs> okay. He was a mutant gorilla. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so a literal grease monkey. Yep. I used the uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles rules. He was basically a a remake of a ninja turtles character that I had, who was a gorilla mm -hmm. mechanic. So I decided to try and remake that character in Rifts as an operator. Excellent. He was a lot of fun. I'm going to start with the uh, with the original riffs. Uh, it's got a uh, great. What was the name of the the bendy doctor? Oh, Richards in the Fantastic Four. Reed Richards. Yeah, it looks just like him, but it really does. Yeah. <laughs> Even to the smirk of the, I have my own company, and I graduated from an Ivy League mad scientist school. I mean, it's yeah, it's definitely got a Reed Richards getting his hands dirty, grease monkey costume. Maybe he went out for Halloween one year. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the knockoff Reed Richards from Venture Brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that guy was, was a little crazy back nuts. then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it's it's a, a, a four hire fix it man capable of of cobbling together fixes for broken things that, that you, you can't do. Rifts is not, unless you're, you're working for Triax and, and that's the campaign, it's not really a, a plug-and-play economy. Like, you don't just go and get the damaged module and plug it back in. If, if you take severe damage, you, there's, you're, it's going to have to be fixed. This is, this is the person who does it. So operators have an interesting role in the fiction, at least. They are sometimes put there alongside rogue scholars and rogue scientists as pariahs of society because they have skills that are needed. And yet, depending upon the mood of the writer of whatever rifts you're looking at at the time, mm. they are either highly, highly valued or outlawed by the coalition. Like I've seen fiction talking about how, oh, operators have to hide from the coalition. And I'm like, fucking why? <laughs> well, why? They just repair you figure stuff. <laughs> anyone who sees inside the propaganda of the suit, you know, and anyone who has the knowledge to repair old tech is dangerous. If, if your, if your dogma is, this is the way and, this person has ways of making things that can challenge your way. That person is dangerous. So, yeah, enemy of the state. Fair um, enough. I mean, I, I guess they that they do are they are one of those people that might have the chance to reverse engineer your technology, and you want to protect mm -hmm. your patents. So. <laughs> yeah, and and your power base and the fear yeah. and yeah, yeah well, you know. <laughs> nice. uh, so getting getting down into it. You, you got to also remember that a lot of them will have a large collection of like ancient writings. Now, they won't be histories, which is probably very dangerous to to places like the Coalition, but they will be old tech manuals, old schematics, old a, a, a lot of a lot of stuff that doesn't fit with the current ethos. So I, I can roll with that. Speaking of skills, uh, sorry, speaking of possessions and abilities. Uh, operators, I must note, start with fucking vehicles. 
<laughs> Not every character does, as we've discovered in playing Rift. And operators start with several. Uh, they also have um, a, a pretty decent amount of cash here. So in addition to those, you know, if you want to play a character who uh, can get around, an operator is mm -hmm. a, uh, a good starter class if you, if you like having toys. And a lot of different toys and a lot of different skills. This is another one of those... Another one of those filling in the blanks. An, an operator can fill many roles. And they they have some interesting limited psionic abilities. Like, what was it, telemechanics? Well, ah, so let's take a look at the, oh, wait, wait, wait. the core Sorry. abilities of the class. So, yeah, here here's where things got a lot different from the Butts edition to the Ultimate edition. So in the Butts edition, you know, you have a little bit, a few paragraphs talking about the, the role of operators in society. And then you've got this, this small paragraph that's basically an afterthought talking about how uh, operators have a, a chance of having telemechanics uh, or, you know, minor psychic powers, basically. Yeah. Which actually won't let them have telemechanics if, it, if it's a minor. Because uh, it, so in the Butts edition, they could potentially have minor psychics. Now, no, telemechanics is a major power, which means yeah. Butts Edition operators will never have that power. But in the Ultimate Edition, they give you uh, an option of being a Psy operator, which you could either roll for it or just choose it, and then they become major psychics, which give them the option of taking telemechanics, uh, which is actually vastly expanded in the Ultimate Edition, but still having that there can completely change your operator concept from just being mm -hmm. dude is good at fixing a motorcycle to dude who speaks with a motorcycle. There is a whole slew of new stuff that they get in ultimate. It's not just, it's not just that this in, in the original, they have a lot of skills uh, a good standard equipment, decent amount of money and um, a very limited range of, of psionic the, a 40% chance to have a very limited range yeah. of, of psionics in ultimate. They can do things that are uh, just special OCCs, which they just didn't have like jury rigging, finding parts and components, recognizing the quality of whatever gear you bring them, souping things up. And I mean, it's, it's formalized. All, all these things are a power with percentages and write-ups. And this is something that we saw with the Vagabond. Yeah. Because the Vagabond in the first one was just a couple of skills, you know, a gun and, uh, you know, go forth and, and the world is your oyster. Your best. <laughs> <laughs> and the operator is the same. The operator gets a handful of skills. They get some good skill choices and they get some stuff. Mm -hmm. Here it's, they get a boost. They get significantly more skills initially, uh, as the, for the OCC at least. And then they get all these cool special abilities, including the much needed rules for repairing MDC mm -hmm. on your gear. <laughs> yes. Like, think of it as this way. Um, the original edition is Jiffy Lube. And the ultimate edition is like Lunk from the third edition of Robotech. Like, the, the man just speaks to machines. They, 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 they work with him and for him. He can jury rig, he can MacGyver anything. And that's that's really the difference is uh, it's, it's just a, a whole new level, a whole new capability. Mm -hmm. And what I find really fascinating here is that. That Psy operator option that you get mm -hmm. only ultimately costs you four skill choices because it simply it says reduces the number of available OCC related skills by half. Oh, uh, well, not four. Sorry. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a total of nine skill choices across 12 experience levels mm -hmm. for telemechanics and other things. <laughs> Worth it. Worth agreed, it. Agreed. <laughs> agreed. I think, like, if given the choice between the two, I would absolutely play the, the ultimate edition over the, the regular edition. The art notwithstanding. Uh, the, the regular art, but edition art was better. I agree. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what kind of overweight tweaky kind of thing we have going on in that one, but I, that the, the picture just doesn't inspire me to play this, this character. Yeah. It's not bad art. It just doesn't inspire me. 
Yeah, yeah. like it's it's great NPC art, but yeah, I'm, that's not someone. Anyway, the the total amount of skills goes up in the uh, in the ultimate edition. Oh, uh, yeah. What's available to the class, the the secondaries also. Yeah, so let's see if we can do a count here. OCC in the original is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 OCC related OCC skills. Here we get 1, 2, 3, 16. 4, 5. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it, and the core OCC abilities on top of that. So, mm-hmm. boom. Yep. Yeah, it's it's about the same amount. Another 4 or 5. Mm-hmm. Let's see, the secondaries, 6 versus 4. You get uh, You actually lose 2 at first level. Plus one. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, yeah, this is yet another uh, instance of what I was saying when we did the rogue scholar, they are sacrificing choice. They are given things, but a lot of their future choice is being removed. Now we did a, a short run for something that never came out where I played uh, opposite one of these fellows. And they were honestly a lot of fun to work with. Some of that, may have very well been the the person playing it but um yes you know kylie's cool yeah we we gotta find an excuse to get him on here absolutely (laughs) this this class is a valuable class and i I've, i've said this so many times but it's 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 quick and i'll say it again the ability to have these classes and to bring and the role play that they give is what lifts Palladium from a from a hack and slash into a, a world that you can enter. And I love that it's here. And I love that other classes like this are here. Agreed. First and foremost, the adventurer classes is what this is in the category of. Those mm-hmm. are the ones that speak to my heart as a gamer. Now, I am the forever GM by choice. So I, I rarely get to actually play. But when I do get the rare opportunity to play and actually want to be a player, I always lean towards either the adventurer classes or, let's face it, dog boy. I love the dog boy. (laughs) I I love the dog boy so much. After the dog boy, though, would be the adventurers. All of them. They're all great. Yeah. They all just create, they, they provide such a unique opportunity to take the game in a direction beyond just shoot things. And, you know, honestly, that's, that's where the memories are made. It's it's not, well, I totally steamed roll over those guys. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm powerful. I fuck her up, bro. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's the struggle. It's using your wits to, to gain a victory that on, on paper you shouldn't have gotten. To outwit, outthink, outmaneuver. All of those things will build the memories your fondness of. If you have God Mode activated, you didn't risk anything. Nobody cares. Yeah, you know, a combat monkey character is going to be like, I got this sweet gun. This is all it does. Yeah, all these people mm-hmm. kill with it. An operator is going to be like, hey, man, check out this gun I just modded. I painted it pink. And every time I get a confirmed <laughs> kill, it plays Yankee Doodle Dandy really loud. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, or I, I was robbed at gunpoint. I was I was about dead. But then I noticed that that their car was was leaking. So I offered to fix it. They let me live. The five pounds of high explosive I planted under the hood really isn't of any importance. <laughs> <laughs> like there's there's so many opportunities just to do cool yeah. things with with this class of of character, and it's just just brilliant to have it. Mm-hmm. Wholeheartedly said, agree. Yeah. I, I don't have a lot more on it. It's it's short. I haven't read the fiction. We will get to that eventually. I'd be interested in in knowing more about what you felt from that, just beyond the fact that they existed. Was there any tidbits or like there's some mention of this that they're not they're not a class of society with guilds like traders or guards or anything like that, but they they do have sort of a an underground Freemason like society that's mentioned in both. Have you uh have you come across anything like that in your reading? Uh not in the like fiction fiction. I, it, mm-hmm. just in the general setting fiction itself. I, I've kind of gotten the feel that the the operators do kind of have this not quite an underground network, but more of a recognition of each other's ability. You know, when an operator passes through, the local operators will probably synchronize up, talk shop a little bit, and then move on. 
trade parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a it is an unofficial network of repairmen <laughs> and mutual mod admiration society. Yeah, like these are the guys who are the ones who synchronize who who uh, who meet up at the the classic car shows <laughs> out in the middle of the wild. You know, this is my Hello Kitty boom gun. <laughs> But this is um, my scale any, replication of a Tonka truck, only at giganti size. <laughs> if if we know if any like really first first rate graphic artists are listening to this show, and you feel like doing a Glitter Boy Hello Kitty style, I would love to see it. Yeah, make it happen. I, I know I've seen the Hello Kitty uh, 40k armies. Oh, they're brilliant. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful. <laughs> All right, everyone. I think I think that's about uh, that's about the operator. If you are interested in other flavors of the operator this is an article in rifter number five go back and listen to mm -hmm. our episode on rifter five or just go check out rifter five it has new op new operator variants in there some of which are really cool uh wasn't that the uh like the the barnstormer or no that uh i think that, that one was, was wasn't it? it that may have been an operator i know it had the the gunsmith was one mm -hmm. the armorer uh, oh it, yes yeah, yeah. yes 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 the one that does grenades, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> we know all about you know, grenades, have, don't we, Abel? <laughs> I have two copies of that book now. <laughs> you sent me one and I bought one. <laughs> nice. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time. Returning back to Rifts, the game that brought us together for our Palladium fandom, this uh, is going to be another issue of the uh, OCC. I mean, I'm just going to start that over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>